Aztec Warfare. Welcome to the 7 Days Podcast being uploaded on Friday, November 18th, but recording 11.04 a.m. on the 17th of November 2016. Today, today's episode is, the theme of the show is Lucha Underground and Aztec Warfare. So let's begin. So today's show, we had a ridiculous episode of Lucha Underground. You have no idea, bro. Tonight's show, or last night's show, I should say, was utterly ridiculous. We started out the show with uh, the boss of Lucha Underground, Dario Cueto, coming through, coming through the bowels of the temple, twirling his key around, heading into uh, Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo, the Gift of the Gods champion with the title on his shoulder, right? Johnny Mundo basically says, look, man, I'm going to walk in there tonight, number 12, and I have two chances of becoming the World Heavyweight Champion within a week. I could become the first ever Lucha on the ground and Gift of the Gods champion. If that doesn't work, then I'll just cash in the Gift of the Gods title next week and become Lucha on the ground champion. So he has two options. And then Dario realizes that. And then he's like, you know what? All right. He took his number. He took his pick. And then he ripped it up in half. And he instantly made Johnny Mundo number two in Aztec Warfare. I'm like, that is some slimy shit. But if you're the boss, I guess you could get that done. So then Matt Stryker and Vampiro, you know, introduce us and welcomes us into the show. Basically telling us the rules of the match. Basically, two luchador starts off in the match. Every 90 seconds, a new luchador enters the ring. The only way to get eliminated is by pinfall or submission. And it has to be taking place inside the ring. It's basically a Royal Rumble. But, it's only pinfalls only. And pinfalls and submissions only. No over-the-top rope bullshit, right? So, the champion Montanza Gueto was in the ring. And, you know, Darius was, you know, welcoming well, welcoming us and announcing that this is Aztec Warfare. And then Darius went to the ring announcer, that beautiful, beautiful ring announcer. And basically told her, look, Sexy Star is no longer number two. Johnny Mundo is number two. And then Darius also told everyone that who... That all who enter Aztec Warfare will be sacrificed by the monster Mantanza. And the match starts off with Mundo and Mantanza, the champion. Number three was Son of Havoc. Number four, Jeremiah K- uh, Crane, uh, which was uh, the ex boyfriend of uh, Eva Least. Oh, no, no, the current boyfriend of Eva Least enters right after her ex boyfriend in Havoc. And Jeremiah Crane, a.k.a. Solomon Crow, right? The guy who was able to hack shit in, back in NXT. And uh, number five was Pentagon Dark. Now, when Pentagon Dark came through, he was my secret pick after I realized he was in this match. I'm like, okay, this guy is... This guy is just... This, this guy breaks bones, bro. This guy breaks people's arms for a living. And, uh, and I, I fear going to Lucha Underground as a wrestler and then wrestle Pentagon Dark knowing that your arm is going to get fucked. That, that is frightening, bro. Fuck all of that. PJ Black, Justin Gabriel was at this match and so many more came through. Number eight was Rey Mysterio and then Dr. Wagner Jr., Marty the Moth Martinez, Jack Evans, Sexy Star, Rick, Ricky Mandel. A lot of people came through in this match. Even Famous B. The, a whack ass. Uh, uh, like, he reminds me of Truth for uh, Jay Lethal. But a black version. And he, he's just whack. 
Like, in a funny way, he's whack. Like, he's just, he's just awful. This guy was giving out his, his card saying, that's my number. That's my number. 423, number, and then the remister was like, hold up. No. How about 619? Throws him onto the ropes, hit him with the 619, and him with a West Coast pop. And then 1, 2, 3, he got pinned. He got eliminated. Uh, let me tell you the most bullshit way. Pentagon Dark got eliminated. All right. Pentagon Dark, when he got eliminated. All right, let me look for it. Uh, it was it was ridiculous. Okay, Pentagon Dark was about to break. I think it was... He was going to break someone's arm off, right? He was about to break someone's arm. And then... So, and then four chicks came through. Four, I, I think, Asian... Four, I don't know, four women came through. And they took this guy's, they took him. They took his shit. They took his, his chance of becoming world champion. Okay. They, they by the way, just to, just to let this, just to say this, I don't know, just to get it out of the way. The kicks in this match was so, it was music to my fucking ears. Oh, what I tell you that? Jeez, you gotta watch this on the guy if you don't watch it, bro. Trust me. Take the time. It's only one hour. It's not like Raw or SmackDown fucking three or two hours, okay? Lucha Underground, one hour. And it's one of the, it's probably the, one of the best hours. It's better than NXT, bro. Like NXT now. Like not NXT overall, but NXT now. NXT now is a little bit whack. A little bit stale. But but Lucha Underground is your is is the best thing this week. Uh, you know, uh, so he was about to be he was about to break someone's arm, and then the four women came in, and all of them did super kicks and her karanas, and they all did their moves, and then fucking Mundo comes in and he pins Pentagon Dark. I'm like, okay, there goes my secret guy. Ha, ah, that was that was uh, that was just fucked up. So everyone came through, right? Joey Ryan came in. He handcuffed himself to the railing by the steps. And he just sitting there like, yeah, I'll just let everybody else fight. You know, I'll just chill here. Then, you know, when everyone else gets eliminated, then I'll just be the one to, to, to get the world title. Number 18, the guy that buried, buried uh, Prince Puma last week. Mio Bortez comes through. And I'm thinking, okay, Joey Ryan, you just fucked yourself with the lube. You just took your own shovel. You just took a shovel and buried your own fucking grave. This guy's going to come in and destroy you. He comes in. Joey Ryan was like, look, man, I didn't mean to do shit. All right. I, just, please, just go. Just go, please. All right. And then Martin's like, you know what? I'm tired of your pussy antics, bro. So... Mortez basically just took R Ryan. Now, you see, when John Cena or Big Show or all these big people, big-ass arms, and they're handcuffed, right? They would struggle to rip off the fucking handcuff. Mio Mortez, while Joey Ryan was handcuffed to the railing, Mortez took Ryan. He ripped him off the fucking railing. The handcuff clearly came off his hand. Clean. Like, like the part with Ryan, when the, the handcuff was was uh, was locked on to Ryan's hand, Mortez ripped that shit off clean. With one shot. This guy, I don't give a fuck who you are. Nobody, I mean nobody, I'm going to say this seriously right now. Mortez and Lucha Underground has been built a hundred, a million times better than Brock Lesnar. I don't give a fuck who you are. This guy has been built to be a fucking, I don't want to say God, but at that level of where you can't touch him. 
This guy had his own fucking throne at one point. This guy, you can't touch him, bro. And I don't care who you are. He's better than Brock Lesnar. He's, he's, his buildup has been a hundred times better than Brock Lesnar. He has not had one bad match in Lucha Underground, to, to my knowledge, okay? Brock Lesnar has been awful for the past couple years. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm being legit serious right now. Brock Lesnar has been awful. Suplex City ain't cutting it, bro. I don't care how many times I get hyped when I hear his music and he comes out to his entrance and then, you know, almost slipping on the fucking on the fucking apron like he did this past Monday night. Right? I don't care how many times I see Brock and I get hyped. I will always have in the back of my mind he he has been booked awful. And I hated his title reign. His WWE World title reign, I hated it. I want to know why? Because he wasn't there for Survivor Series. He wasn't there for Hell in the Cell. He wasn't there for for TLC, basically. You know, he wasn't there, period. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, oh, but he's Brock Lesnar. He's a special attraction. I don't give a fuck. Why you have to make everyone else come out every week and defend their title? But Brock, oh, oh, uh, Brock and Chill. No, fuck that. So, Martez has been built up better than Brock Lesnar. He's better than Brock Lesnar, period. I don't give a fuck who you are. And uh, later on in the show, Drago came, comes through and he does his thing. Uh, Drago got eliminated. Uh, all right, so, we were down to the final six. It was Rey Mysterio, Montanza, Mir Mortez, Johnny Mundo, Sexy Star, and the, and the life of the Mac. And... This is where things got good. This is where things got good. The world champion and Rey Star were going out in the ring. Everybody came through and they gave their big shots to the champion. Sexy Star hit him with a code breaker. The Mac hit him with a stunner. Mundo hit him with a springboard beautiful disaster kick. And Rey Mysterio caught him on a 619. He tried to go for the dime, but Matanza was still like was still not able to be knocked down. So Rey Mysterio hit him on a drop kick, did one for the 619 again. But Matanza caught him this time. He caught him and he had his legs up and Mysterio's head was down, facing the map. And he was about to drop him. He was about to crush him. The second he jumped, Mysterio able to counter to a sunset flip powerbomb. Montanza was down for the count. One, two, the champion was eliminated. In the final six, the champion was eliminated. And he's no longer world champion. Dario Cueto, the boss, the brother of the champion, the boss of Lucha on the ground, was stunned. He was shocked like I was. Holy shit. Oh my god, that was the best feeling. I'm like, this guy has been built up to be an unstoppable force. And remember Stereo, that one guy, the one guy to put down the big man. And Rimba Stowe got paid for it. Rimba Stowe got his ass kicked for it. He got destroyed, all right? Montanza destroyed the fucking guy and choked the life out of him. And after hit him with his, I think it was called Wrath of the Gods. Like, it was like a spinning world's strongest slam type move. And he just dropped Rimba Stereo. And then Mundo comes in and fucking pins a lifeless Mysterio. So, okay. So later on. Uh, fucking PJ Blackie, Jack Evans, they were eliminated earlier in the match, and then they came through, they came back to the match. And they were double teaming, they were triple teaming with Mundo against Sexy Star. While Wormer Serial was being attended by the paramedics at ringside, a guy named Angelico, or a Angelico, 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 I don't, I don't know how you pronounce his name, alright. Some guy was wearing some neon green or yellow type shit. This guy fucking leaped. A leap of faith. He fucking dove some from somewhere high. And he dove onto Mundo, PJ Black, and Jack Evans. And then, Sexy Star covers Mundo. And Mundo, the, the, the Gift of the Gods champion, has been eliminated. And then we're, found, we're down to three. Mirtes, the Mac... And 
Sexy Star. And then while the match was going on, Sexy Star was outside of the ring, and Muirtez hit flat hit the flatline and finishing move on the life of the Mac, and the Mac got eliminated. So it was down to Muirtez versus Sexy Star, and I'm thinking, okay, Muirtez got this. Not because she's a woman, it's because this guy's a fucking freak of nature. There's no fucking way she's gonna beat the fucking guy. All right, this guy's a fucking freak of nature. Not even one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen, out like ever outside of, besides AJ Styles, fucking Prince Puma could to take this guy down, and he tried to last week in that casket match. All right, so. Mutez did everything he could. He set up a table. And fucking uh, Sexy Star was at the table. He was charging at her. She got out the way. He was trying to spear her through the table. She got out the way. And after he hit his head so hard into the table, the table fucking cracked in pieces. And then, like, it destroyed in pieces. And after uh, Sexy Star tried to roll him up for uh, a schoolgirl, one, two, and then he kicked out. And then Mutez. Directly punched her in the fucking face. Like, Jesus. <laughs> it was nasty. You gotta watch. You gotta watch who's on the ground to know what I'm saying, okay? Like, fuck all of the. Uh, fuck what anyone says. Just go watch it and, and think for yourself, bro. So, I'm thinking, okay. She has a chance. You know, if she was able to survive that, I don't know what she's gonna do now. I don't know what's gonna happen. So Mirtis brought out another table and he sets it up properly. And he had her in the corner. Now the camera panned to four women sitting in the crowd like they're about to witness a murderer, right? And <laughs> Mirtis had imagine a man taking a woman on the top rope and has her for like a reverse rock bottom. Think about that real quick. Let that sink in. Alright, so he has her up. And she, I was like, okay, this is over. She's done. Uh, she's going to go through the table. Good God. And then she was able to counter and knock him down. He went through the table. The table crashed. Everything was was in pieces. And then after that, she hit him with a coup de gras like Finn Balor. Fucking double foot stomp from the top. And... And... I, I'm shocked to say this. One, two, three. She pinned Mirtez. And now, Sexy Star is the new Lucha Underground champion. Aztec Warf War Warfare was the best thing this entire week. Fuck Raw, fuck SmackDown a little bit, fuck NXT, fuck TakeOver for, for now until Saturday, and fuck Survivor Series, all those six hours. Sexy Star is the first luchadora to win the Lucha Underground World Heavyweight Championship. What can I say about that? A woman, a masked luchador, is world champion. They pulled it better than what WWE tried to do with China years ago. Like, they had a chance to, to, to show that even a woman can become world champion. They didn't do it. They failed it. They let Triple, Triple H, uh, let me get the title. No, he, he came through and he won the title. Wow. If that doesn't scream equality, I don't know what does. I never thought I would see in any wrestling company a woman becoming the world heavyweight champion, the world champion of your fucking company. I never thought I'd be saying that right now. And I'm not disappointed. I'm not mad. I'm fucking stunned and I'm happy and I'm excited to see what's going to happen next week. Lucha Underground was my favorite show 
of this entire week so far. And I'll be proud to say it by the end of the week in my Survivor Series review that if I'm not if I'm not pleased, I'm saying this right now, if I'm not pleased with Survivor Series, then one, I'm glad I didn't go. And two, Lucha Underground was the best show of the week. NXT must have been a, a close second. Now, I, I don't know what to say now. You know what? Let me uh, give you guys my predictions for NXT TakeOver Toronto. I mean, I don't think I should because I kind of know what's going to... I feel like it's kind of predictable. I really hate to say that. But uh, I, 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 I do think that NXT TakeOver is actually fucking predictable this week. I, 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 that's what I just... That's what I think. Okay, so the matches we have, we have, um, so a new match has been set up at TakeOver is Aaliyah, Amber Moon, and Liv Morgan, all right, taking on Peyton Royce, Billy Kay is, eh, no, all right, and a partner of their choosing yet to be confirmed. Now, we don't know who could, I thought, I was first, for, at first I was thinking of, of Asuka, but I forgot she's facing Mickey James. So I'm like, who the fuck are they going to get? You know, who who are they going to pick? Like, are they going to pick that Mandy chick? Even Marie version 2? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so that's going to be something interesting to know. Um, then uh, we have... So we have the Dusty Road Tag. I, I, no disrespect at all. I just don't like tournaments at the beginning. I always say this because it's true. The tournaments at the beginning takes forever for me. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start caring at the end. So I thought Sanity was going to win or go to the finals. It's fucking Authors of Pain versus TM61. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get to that in a sec. We have, this might be the best match of the fucking night. <laughs> if they had the best match of the night at TakeOver, this is going to happen. Maybe not. Fucking best of three falls match for the NXT Tag Team titles. We have the Champions of the Revival versus the Challengers. Uh, hashtag DYI or DIY, whichever one. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. We have Bobby Roode versus Ty Dillinger. And the main event NXT title match. Shinsuke Nakamura, the champ, versus the challenger Samoa Joe. We all know who's going to win that one. So let's just get this out of the way. I'm going to go with TM61 to win this match. I'll be shocked if the Authors of Pain win. I feel like, you know, they let a babyface won the last time. You know, T uh, Joe and Finn Balor won last year. So I feel like. TM61 might get this one. <sighs> my fi This is my favorite match of the night. I don't give a fuck. This is my personal favorite match of the night. The two Canadians, bro. One from the fucking place itself. Bobby Roode from Toronto versus a man from Niagara Falls, Ty Dillinger. I want to say Ty Dillinger, but I have a feeling that the glorious one is going to get the win, but I'm sticking with Ty Dillinger. Fuck it. Ty Dillinger has been looking like a fool by Bobby Roode. And he tried to fight back, so he's going to get the win, in my opinion, this. I'm not going to get mad who fucking wins regardless. This is two of my favorite people right now in NXT, so it's not going to matter who wins. I win in the end, so it doesn't matter. Um, as long as Bobby Roode has a better finishing maneuver. Maybe have maybe let him use the rude bomb. I don't know. Uh, I have to go with Gargano and Ciampa for the tag team titles because seriously, they should have won it at Takeover Brooklyn. Like that match, holy shit! We were all on eggshells, bro. We were on the edge of our seats, just hoping that Gargano Ciampa was gonna win that match. Holy shit! So I, I'm going to go with TM61 to win the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Uh, Gargano and Ciampa to win the tag team titles. Um, 
tie the Undertaker to win this match, and I'm going to go with Billy Kay and Peyton Royce to win their match with the partner they're choosing. I don't know who could it be, so I'm I'm going to go with them. And we all know Nakamura's going to win, and we all know Oscar's going to win their, their title matches. We, we all know that. I don't see Mickey James winning her match. No. I don't see that at all. And I don't see Samoa Joe winning it again. I don't see that at all. So, yeah. It's Nakamura, Asuka, Ty Dillinger, TF61, and Gargano and Ciampa. My predictions for NXT take over uh, Toronto in me backyard. It's going to be lit. I'm not going to say it's going to be the best. Takeover of all time. I believe Dallas was the best one, mainly because it was WrestleMania weekend, and whenever, whenever it's WrestleMania weekend, people get super hyped. So I have to go with NXT Takeover. Dallas, the best one out of all. Like number one Takeover you should watch is Takeover uh, Dallas, but maybe the ones with Zayn and Neville, those guys, maybe those you would I would recommend you guys watch too. But yeah. NXT TakeOver predictions, uh, I don't think there's any else, I don't think there's any anything else I should talk about because I already did the Survivor Series predictions on my Monday Night Raw review this past Monday night. You guys can go check that out, the link is in the description box below, and I, I, also, I also uploaded a bragging rights video, I uploaded it yesterday, you guys can go Check that out. The link is also in the description box below. I think I'm done for here. I think I'm done for the for the day for the for the podcast. Uh, tune in to next week on the podcast where I'll be where something hopefully 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 something good happens next week. I don't know, but uh, yeah, guys, that is it. This is a Lucha Underground theme based off. Uh, a show because nothing else happened this week. Raw was, Raw was Raw. Raw was uh only promos I only cared about. Everything else sucked. Uh, SmackDown, uh, I cared at times. SmackDown was better than Raw, obviously, but you know I didn't care about that. I didn't care about it that much. The only thing I could care about was the Undertaker taking souls and fucking holes. Okay, that's all I cared about. Undertaker, what he was gonna say. And, you know, because everyone else on the internet was hyping it up. Oh, Undertaker's going to come back and announce his WrestleMania match. Or Undertaker's going to have his his promo. And then John Cena comes out and... Uh, duh, 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 like, that wouldn't make any sense. Because if John Cena could fucking come out for Undertaker promo, why couldn't he come out weeks ago for fucking Survivor Series? Think about that. So, that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the podcast. I'm not going to go higher than than what it is now so leave a thumbs up leave your comments on what you guys think about lucha underground and what do you guys think of the results of sexy star the first luchadora to become lucha underground champion leave your thoughts down below and nothing much to it leave your uh sorry uh follow me on twitter at boy one three gym the twitter link is always in the damn description box below and i think i'm done and, uh, yeah, cue the outro, and I'm out later, three, two, one...